In this video, we're going to talk about how to use Raoult's law in order to calculate the vapor pressure of a solution. So here is the equation that's associated with Raoult's law. The vapor pressure of the solution is the product of the mole fraction of the solvent multiplied by the vapor pressure of the solvent. So Raoult's law states that if you add a non-volatile solute to, let's say, a solvent, the vapor pressure of the solution will be less than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. So let's say if you add salt to water, the vapor pressure of the salt water solution will be less than the vapor pressure of pure water. So here's an example. The vapor pressure of pure water is 23.8 torr. Our goal is to calculate the vapor pressure of the solution. So we have glucose and water. So our answer should be less than 23.8 torr. Now we already have P of solvent, that's the vapor pressure of water. Water is the solvent in this example, and glucose is the solute. So what we really need to find is the mole fraction of the solvent, which is the mole fraction of water. That's equal to the moles of water divided by the total moles in the solution, which is the moles of water and the moles of glucose. So let's calculate the moles of each substance. So let's start with water. We have 500 milliliters of water, and the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter. So we have 500 grams of water. Now the molar mass of water is about 18.016 grams. So this is going to be 500 divided by 18.016. And so we have 27.753 moles of water. Now let's calculate the moles of glucose. So we have 30 grams of glucose. And if you don't know the chemical formula of glucose, it's C6H12O6. So we've got to find the molar mass of glucose. So that's going to be 6 times the atomic mass of carbon, which is 12.01 plus 12 times the atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008, and 6 times the atomic mass of oxygen. So the molar mass of glucose is 180.156 grams. So 30 divided by that number is 0.1665 moles. So now we have the moles of glucose and we have the moles of water. So we can now find the mole fraction of water. So it's going to be 27.753 divided by that same number plus the moles of glucose. And let's put this in parentheses. So the mole fraction is 0.994. Now let's calculate the vapor pressure of the solution. So it's going to be the mole fraction of water, which is 0.994, multiplied by the vapor pressure of water, which is 23.8 torr at 25 degrees Celsius. So the vapor pressure of the solution is a little bit lower than 23.8. It's 23.66 torr. So now you know how to calculate the vapor pressure of the solution when you have a non-volatile solute dissolved in water. Now let's work on number two. 40 grams of calcium chloride is dissolved in 600 milliliters of water at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the vapor pressure of the solution? So this time, we have an ionic solute dissolved in water. So how is this problem different from the last one? Well, let's calculate the moles of water and the moles of calcium chloride first. So we have 600 milliliters of water 
and the density of water is still 1 gram per milliliter. And the molar mass is the same. It's 18.016 grams. So 600 divided by 18.016, that's going to be 33.304 moles of H2O. Now when dealing with an ionic compound, you need to calculate the moles of not the ionic compound or the formula units, but the total moles of ions in the solution. So let's start with 40 grams of calcium chloride. And now let's calculate the molar mass of calcium chloride. So we have one calcium ion and two chloride ions. So the atomic mass of calcium is about 40.08, and the atomic mass of chlorine is 35.45. So this adds up to 110.98 grams per mole. So one mole of calcium chloride has a mass of 110.98 grams. Now the next thing we need to do is convert the moles of calcium chloride into the moles of total ions. So there's three moles of ions per one mole of calcium chloride. So if you're wondering how to get that, I'll show it to you in a minute. So calcium chloride, when it dissolves, it breaks up into one calcium ion and two chloride ions. So if, if you add up the coefficients, one plus two adds up to three. So we get three solute particles. So the vapor pressure of the solution is dependent on the total number of the solute particles and not really the identity of the solute particles. So this is going to be 40 divided by 110.98 multiplied by 3. So in this example, we have 1.081 mole of ions. So now we can calculate the mole fraction of the solvent. So that's going to be the moles of water divided by the total moles, which includes the moles of water plus the moles of the ions. So that's 33.304 divided by that number again, plus 1.081. And so the mole fraction is 0.9686. So now we can use Raoult's law to calculate the vapor pressure of the solution. So it's the mole fraction of water times the vapor pressure of water. So it's going to be 0.9686 multiplied by 23.8 torr. So that's 23.05 torr. So that's the vapor pressure of the solution. Number three, how many grams of glucose must be added to 250 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius to create a solution with a vapor pressure of 54 torr? And the vapor pressure of water at 40 Celsius is 55.3 torr. So how can we find the mass of glucose? Well, let's start with Raoult's law. I'm not sure what happened there. The vapor pressure of the solution is equal to the mole fraction of water times the vapor pressure of water. So the vapor pressure of the solution is 54 torr. The mole fraction of water, we don't know, but we need to find it. And the vapor pressure of pure water at 40 Celsius is 55.3 torr. So let's divide both sides by 55.3. 
54 divided by 55.3 is 0.9765. So that's the mole fraction of H2O, which means that the moles of water divided by the moles of water plus the moles of glucose, that's equal to 0.9765. So what we need to do is we need to calculate the moles of water. And with that, we could find the moles of glucose. So using the moles of glucose and the molar mass of glucose, which we know to be 180.156, we can calculate the grams of glucose. Now let's start with 250 grams of water. And let's convert that to moles. So the molar mass of water is still 18.106 grams. So 250 divided by 18.016 is 13.877 moles. So that's how many moles of water we have. So now let's plug that in to this equation. So we don't need this anymore. So it's going to be 13.877 divided by that same number plus the moles of glucose, which equals, well, and all of that is equal to 0.9765. So now we need to do some math in order to calculate the missing variable. So let's cross multiply. So 13.87 times 1 is just 13.877. And then these two terms multiplied by 0.9765. So we've got to distribute it. So first we've got to do 13.877 times 0.9765. And that's 13.551. And then... 0.9765 times the moles of glucose. Now let's subtract these two numbers. So 13.877 minus 13.551, that's 0.326, and that's equal to this result. So now we need to divide both sides by 0.9675 in order to isolate the moles of glucose. So 0.326 divided by 0.9675, that's equal to 0.337 moles of glucose. Now the last thing that we need to do is convert the moles of glucose to moles of grams. So let's start with this number and let's multiply it by 180.156 grams per mole. So we need 60.7 grams of glucose to produce a solution with a vapor pressure of 54 torr at 40 degrees Celsius.